Good morning, friends. Good morning. If you don't know me, I'm Doug Harbach, and um, Pastor Steve was um, unable to be here today because he's doing a good thing. He's with our confirmands on the retreat uh, for, for uh, spending time with them as we get ready for their service uh, in a couple weeks where we welcome them in as members of church. Uh, so today, as you see this guy sitting over there, that's Chris Renner, Reverend Chris Renner is a good friend of Pastor Steve. He uh, served in Marion United Methodist Church and then uh, later became uh, one of Pastor Steve's parishioners upon retirement at Messiah United Methodist Church in Shippensburg. So we welcome him to the pulpit today uh, and look forward to his message uh, to us. Um, I'm not going to bring anything special to you. There's a lot of announcements that are in uh, the bulletin today, so I'll ask you to pay attention to those and read those um, for today. Um, otherwise, let's, um, let's soften our hearts down and get ready for worship to our Lord as we start today with our prelude.
Thank you, Linda. And now, please stand if you're able to uh, take our call to worship and then remain standing for our gathering prayer and first hymn. Our times are in your hands. Deliver us from the hands of the enemy. Let our face shine on your service. Save us in your unveiling love. Join me in prayer. Almighty God, to truly know is everlasting life. Help us to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life that we may faithfully follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. In 368, my hope is built. And now, with the love of God and our hearts, take a moment to greet one another in peace. All right, children. For those who feel like children, please come forward. We'll have our children's moment. Did I turn it on? I did. Amazing. Good morning. Good morning, Ava and Emily. Nathan, no? Are you coming? No. Oh, well, yep, yep, he's coming. And Joshua and Josie is walking up here 
on her own. That is adorable. Um, Mom, did she just start walking on her own or about a week or two ago? Because she's she was a year old on just April 23rd, right? Just a, wow, so fast. Okay, so this morning um, we were going to talk about um, gardening because it's getting warm out. Um, Micaiah, I have a question for you. What did you bring home from school recently? A tree. A tree. Did you bring home the whole tree on your back? Did you bring home the whole tree on your back? Did you strap it to the car roof? Did you dig it up? How did you bring home a tree? In a bag. How did you fit a tree in a bag? A sapling tree. Oh, a sapling tree. See, it's important to give details. So it was a sapling. So it's, it's planted in a big coffee can right now, right? Okay, so how big do you think that, that tree plant's going to get right now? And this is to everybody. Okay, Nathan's got an answer. How big do you think that plant's going to get, Nathan? Oh, oh, well, maybe. Does anybody else have an idea of how big that sapling's going to get in that coffee can? Kai, do you have a guess? This big? This big? I don't know. Anybody else? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's not going to get any bigger. It's not going to get any bigger because it's not planted. It's receiving no nutrients. It's not going to grow. It's separated from its mommy plant. And it's not replanted in solid ground. So. It's just really a stick, not a tree at all, not even a sapling. It's just a stick in a coffee can. And now I guess when we go home, you're going to bug me to plant it, aren't you? Okay. Well, I kind of did that to myself. So what does that have to do with Jesus? Okay. I don't expect you to tell me. I'm going to tell you. When we say that we know Jesus and have a relationship with Jesus, then we are growing in our faith, but it's not enough to say it. We have to believe it and we have to follow through with it. So Michaela has said it. She's been confirmed. So she's here at church. And I know every night before bed, she's talking to God. And every day she's reading her Bible and doing devotion. So she is growing in her faith. She is close to Jesus and she's growing. But Micaiah, well, he comes to church. So he's kind of like that sapling. He's kind of not growing because, I, well, I should say this is a hypothetical thing, okay? Um, he's, no, 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 I, I'm not saying this is real, honey. It's not real. This is just pretend, I'm just saying, okay? He's, because he's not connecting to Jesus. He's not connecting. He's not putting his roots into Jesus like the trees do. He's not talking to Jesus. It's so important that you talk to Jesus. It's good that you know that Jesus told parables. It's good that you know facts about Jesus. But Jesus really wants you to talk to him and get to know him so that you can grow. All right, that's enough of that. I'm sorry, Kai. Let's pray. Dear God, I am so grateful that we have these little seedlings in your garden patch. And I pray that all of us will continue to nurture them and help them grow. In your name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> okay, you can all go back to your seats.
Thanks, Brianna, and thanks for all you do for our children. So with an understanding um, that we're in God's house, let's pray together. As we gather as one body, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayers. First, in a moment of silence, hear our individual prayers. And as we come to you in a body, we ask collectively for so many things that troubles us in this world. Lord, we ask you to be involved and help us to love one another more. As we look at the hatred that permeates through this country and through the world, we ask that minds that can see a peaceful world start to enact things that will show the loving that we are asked to do as people of this country and earth. In particular, we stand here today, unfortunately, to ask for the prayers of everyone involved in the latest shooting down in Texas and for those people who died just going out for a day of shopping. We pray for our government officials to find a way to stop this hatred and death. As we approach another time of elections, we ask that we have wisdom as we choose those that will be responsible for enacting and creating our laws. Mostly, Lord, we ask for peace, love, and understanding throughout not just this world, but in particular right now within our own Methodist Church as people have different ideas on moving forward. But we know, Lord, in the end that we are people of Christ who do love one another and will treat each other with respect that you want us to give. We thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day, the opportunity to be here. We thank you for having Pastor Renner with us today to provide a message. And we ask, Lord, that um, we, we go out during this week and all be safe in everything we do. In your name we pray. Amen. So with the understanding of how much we are financially blessed uh, with the gifts that God gives us, let's now present to him our tithes and our offerings.
gifts can be used in the greatest way possible for our parishioners, for our world. And we thank you, Lord, for all the gifts you provide. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Today's scripture comes from multiple passages. Um, Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Uh, Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us, that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him he endured on the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider with him who endured such a opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And finally, John 15, verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, truly, this is a church of hospitality. Uh, I have uh, been overwhelmed with your hospitality here since I uh, entered the doors at about 
8.30 a.m. this morning. Now, I have one question. I want to make sure. I, I see that there is a clock that is in plain view of the pulpit. Is that correct? Yes. Is that clock accurate? Yes. Okay. It's a little slow. <laughs> well, <laughs> this will work just fine. <laughs> when Pastor Steve uh, called me to, to share uh, with you worship, a message. Uh, I, I had to ask, I said, now, typically, what? how much do you preach? How long do you preach? And uh, he right away said, now, you know, we have communion, and uh, that we try to keep it a little bit shorter. He said, 15 minutes? I said, well, I thought this. I did not say this because I wasn't sure that he'd invite me. And I said, I don't know that I could do a devotional within 15 minutes. Uh, but I've been praying about this. So let, I, I, let us pray. Lord, give me the words to share this day in this place. May it be pleasing, the message, the remembering your word, that it might encourage and give us hope this day. In the name of Jesus, amen. It's a difficult time in which we are living. I appreciated uh, Doug's prayer this morning. We, it, it captured a very uh, good synopsis, synopsis of, of what is happening, what we're experiencing in our world today. I would say in the last three or so years that we have experienced, all of us, some things that are unprecedented in perhaps our lifetimes. With the head of the list, the COVID situation. We know that we live in a time that there's a lot of violence and disagreements that unfortunately will, could uh, end up in shootings. This morning in, on the news, uh, there's, it's, it's rare that we do not turn on the news or turn on our computers and not see a, a shooting somewhere. It can be very close within our community. It can be uh, just a few miles away. But throughout, we're an angry people. There's a lot of tension in the air. There's a quote from Thomas Paine. Do you remember Thomas Paine? He would have been, uh, this, this was two and a, almost two and a half centuries ago at, with the American Revolution, Thomas Paine was one of our uh, founding fathers. And, and he writ, wrote this uh, quote that it, it comes to mind, especially in these times. These are the times that try men's souls. Oh, how true. How true that quote is uh, pertinent to our lives today. So in all of the challenges and trials and tribulations and the issues of not getting along well together in a lot of areas of our lives, how do we move forward? 
Now, I appreciate our liturgist, uh, and he probably appreciated the fact that there were just a couple of verses of Scripture that we lifted up this morning. And I think these a few short passages will help us find the fundamental key, uh, the prerequisite of being able to individually and as a church, corporately, to move forward, to progress in the hope and promises that Christ gives us. I think they can be captured in, in one verse from 2 Peter 3.18. It, it's a verse that often, when I was a uh, full-time pastor and we had confirmation classes, that this would often be a, a theme verse. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory now and forever grow in the grace and knowledge. So the last scripture was probably the, all scripture is important, but it sort of nails right, uh, right on what we, the answer of how we can move forward in these troubled times. And these are Jesus' words to his disciples. Just a couple of, uh, of moments uh, just before his arrest and uh, his death on the, on the cross, his crucifixion. And he gave this promise. I am the vine, you are the branches, if you remain. Now in some translations, instead of remain, abide. If you remain or abide in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. That is pretty much to the, to the point. And actually, that is the answer to the question, how do we move forward in such difficult circumstances that we live in. It is in Christ that we move forward. And you could say, gosh, he's, he's got it. We only have five minutes into this message and we could sit down. But you know I'm not going to do that. It is in Christ but do we fully remain in Christ? And as we do remain in Christ, if he is our guide, if we consult him for every decision that we make, before we speak, that we think, Christ, I wish I could do that. We are a, a work in progress. If we do, as we do, we bear much fruit. Do you remember the fruit of the Spirit? Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. And folks, if you don't have the fruit of the Spirit committed here or on your refrigerator or your mirror in the bathroom we need to be reminded and it begins with one characteristic that is it encompasses every of all the other eight there are nine qualities that the spirit gives us and the first is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, 
gentleness. And I always remember it, but it's the toughest one for me. Self-control. That, folks, is our, when we are not in the spirit, and I know that Jesus promised that he would be with us at all times, always, to the end of the age. But there are times that we get off track. There are just so many things that uh, complicate our lives that we do our own thing and perhaps just it's at heat of the moment, but we do not consult our Lord before he, we say something or perhaps it's, it's, it's something that we're just thinking. But I think we know our body language sometimes tells us that we're not in the fruit of the Spirit. Sometimes even pastors forget to pray. Early on in, in, in my pastoral ministry, uh, I had a two-point charge in the Carlisle area. And the small of the, the churches, the smallest, uh, had very few children. But we always had a children's message. And typically there would be one little girl, Caitlin, who would come and I would have a she would be uh, our one child to, uh, to share the, the message. And we shared the message. He, she was probably four or five years old. And at the end of my message, I excused her that she could go and sit with her grandmother. And she didn't move. She was seated in the, the stair or, or the step that would lead to the communion table and the pulpit. And so I thought perhaps she was thinking something else and, and I would uh, uh, repeat it. And I said, Caitlin, now you are excused to go and sit in the pew with your grandmother. She looked at me. I was sitting beside her. And she said, but we didn't pray. You know, I don't have a clue what I shared in that children's message that day. But I will never forget the message that she gave me. But we didn't pray. And how... Many times can that happen, that we can get right on with our business and we didn't pray. And it makes all the difference in the world. Our Old Testament passage from Proverbs uh, chapter 3, 5, and 6, familiar to many of us, trust in the Lord with all our hearts with all your heart. That's the key. And lean not on your own understanding. How often do we lean first and foremost of our own understanding? This is what we believe needs to happen. In all of your ways, submit to him. That's critical. Submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. If we don't even ask him to, to uh, get involved in this decision or whatever's happening in our lives, how can we submit to our Lord? And our final passage is from Hebrews chapter 12, the first three verses. It follows chapter 11, which is often referred to as the faith chapter in Hebrews. And that chapter, as, as a pre, 
uh, cursor that we would know because when, when someone, when we begin the passage with therefore, it's important to know what comes before that. And in essence, it is a whole host of, of biblical uh, giants of faith that were called to leave their familiar surroundings. Uh, they, they were called to take a risk and actually to do something that didn't seem to make sense with them perhaps at the time. People like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, Moses and David. You know, and, and they, they were people like us in, in a sense that we, they didn't have perfect records or, or doubted, they did. They had their shortcomings, just like us. Uh, we all shall fall short of the glory of God from Romans 3, 23. We are sinners saved by God's grace through Jesus Christ. So I want us to focus on, on uh, Hebrews 12, thinking about this in terms of our lifetimes and it seems like well perhaps this isn't as important as the other two passages well it's I think it is just as important how we have been encouraged with such a great cloud of witnesses now I want you just to think just for a moment all the people that have impacted your lives with Christ. And you know, most likely you are here in this service today because of one or two or certain persons that impacted, that brought and helped in introduce you to Jesus Christ in your lives. So it's important that we would pass that on to others. And we know that our greatest uh, witness is Jesus Christ himself. For it, he foremost stirs us to move forward, to run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. We will, we will sing that in just a bit. The perfecter of our faith and that we will not grow weary and lose heart. There's a devotional that and I, I don't know if Diane Salter is here is she here is she in the this sanctuary later well I may run into her later then okay 10 or so years at least 10 years ago I was given this gift Quiet Moments with God, written by Lloyd John Ogilvie. And as you can see, I have used this. I have used it as my primary devotional for at least three years. Now, I would set it on the shelf, and maybe two to three years later, I would get this book out. I have shared it with Bible studies. I have shared it with uh, men's groups. It has been wonderful. And I was helping Diane probably at annual conference. Maybe you have, some of you have received this gift. I have passed this gift on. Uh, praise the Lord for Amazon that I have shared it with family members, uh, friends, those who 
I felt would appreciate to hear the word of the Lord. Now, I don't know if Diane realized how much I have appreciated and what it has done to touch other people's lives. A simple little gift can make a huge difference. I am going to close, <laughs> but, and, and my goal was to stay within five minutes of that 15 minute, and I think I'm going to make that. I want to share um, a personal story with uh, some of you know, and I know I have familiar faces here in this, uh, in this congregation. But 16 years ago, a little over 16 years ago, I had a stroke that I was in the Chambersburg Hospital for at least a week. And it was the darkest time in my life. Uh, it was a time when I wasn't sure if uh, that my calling to be a pastor would be able to be fulfilled. I was not able to speak a full sentence. I could get a couple of disjointed words out. John Al came to get visit me. Um, I know that uh, there were a lot of a host of, of pastors that and parishioners. There was a whole host a cloud of witnesses that were praying for me, rallying me. But the one that I want to share with you is my roommate, Fred. And Fred was an encourager. He called me Reverend. And I would, if, if I would have been able to talk plainly, I would have said, please, Fred, don't, don't call me Reverend. Uh, because I can tell you, I was not acting like a reverend. I was not at lack, acting like a pastor. I was consumed with the question, why? Why, Lord? Why did you bring me to this journey to call me to be a pastor? And all of a sudden, I can't even speak a sentence. Fred encouraged me. Um, we, we, we had some common bonds. Both of us detested the breakfast there. Now, I know if, if some of you are working at the, uh, I'm sure that Wellspan has improved the breakfast. Um, maybe not. <laughs> but no, no question about it. Uh, we that we could we could come on uh, common terms. Well, to make a long story short, God healed me miraculously. In six and a half uh, weeks, after intense speech therapy, and I think you can you understand this this comment. Uh, I could hardly talk, and now I can't shut up. <laughs> Literally. When I hit the feet, of my, if, if my wife, she's, she's a dear uh, saint, because when, every morning I greet the morning with, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. She is not a morning person, and I am... Fred came to my uh, first sermon after the hospital stay. And uh, after that, I wanted to share, and, and this is amazing that I even kept this, but when I retired six years ago now, almost six years, I kept some of the things that I had in my desk, and that was letters that I would send to people when they had come to our, our uh, 
service. And it was sort of a, just a canned letter, but I always put a handwritten note. I wasn't sure how this happened, but perhaps this letter may have something to do with that. Four and a half years after we were in the hospital, Fred and I, I saw his obituary and my wife B and I went to that funeral. And when we're greeting everyone, I wasn't sure, but I thought that this was uh, Fred's wife, her name was Dee, and in essence, uh, when I told her who I was and that I was Fred's roommate four and a half, oh, she was got ecstatic, and she said, did you know that Fred gave his life to the Lord a couple of years ago, and that it was me that led him there? And I was floored. I said, I, I, I didn't know. And because that was the, I was not a nice person at that point. But I did share this. In February 13th, 2007, I read, wrote this uh, little note, personal note to Fred. I was very thankful that you were able to come Sunday. It meant a lot to me. I told him that I, when I could preach again, I'm going to call him and let him know and give him an invitation to that service. Fred, you have been an inspiration to me. I thank you for your friendship and encouragement. And please know that you are always welcome here anytime. I also pray that you get stronger and better each day. And regarding your breathing, and also with your relationship with the Lord, I believe that for both of us, our hospital stay was a blessing. Thanks for being there. Blessings. Your roommate, Reverend. <laughs> because he always called me Reverend. <laughs> I don't know if that helped. I had, other than that one time, I did see him in the hospital and I had a short, a short prayer with him. God has a way of working through broken people. But we need to allow him to work and bear fruit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, use us, Lord, to move forward as we remain and abide in you. To share your love and grace with a world so desperately in need of such. Lord, at times we think that our voice, what we can do is inconsequential. And in fact, we can make a huge difference, one person at a time in these troubled times in which we are living. Just as you have shared in your word, everything is possible for the one who believes. May we go and be faithful that in you we will fully abide. Amen.
I knew that I was going to need help. <laughs> what is on the uh, the bulletin? Okay, you may be seated. <laughs> I thought, gosh, did I forgot something here? Uh, okay. I know what I would like to do is move this. It, we're good to move this? Okay. Oh, that's heavy. Before we go to our Thanksgiving, great Thanksgiving, I want, I want us to have a moment of silent prayer. And I want you to uh, connect with our Lord to seek forgiveness. It's, it's a prayer of confession as we come to our Lord's holy table. Uh, so... Let us uh, just go to the Lord. Whatever is on your heart, let us pray individually. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. And so with your people of on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son, from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word, and the Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. And when he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This 
is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to the Lord's table here uh, this morning, please be patient with me because I know that there's a little, sometimes things uh, we do different in, in different settings. Um, I know the, the folks that uh, gave me the instructions uh, they are gracious, uh, and so I might be a little step uh, up, uh, out of step. I will uh, put my gloves on, and the stations will pre we will prepare. And I think it's typically that we have two stations in the front of the sanctuary. That as the ushers after the choir communes, the ushers will have you come forward and you will come through the stations to receive the body and the blood of Christ. This is a holy moment. Uh, prepare your hearts to receive this great gift, this wonderful gift. Amen.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that you have refreshed us. Fresh us with this holy gift. As your word reminds us, as often as we come to the table uh, and share the bread, the body, and the cup, the blood of Christ, uh, we remember the gift of grace that is the hope of the world. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our hymn uh, is uh, Standing on the Promises. And there's, is there, there's four stanzas. If, if we would just do uh, the first and the, and the last of Standing on the Promises. And now with apologies to all of the Sunday school attendees and teachers, may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus this day and every day. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let us move forward in Christ. Amen.